Hey folks, you might remember this article talking about how there was sustained ionospheric perturbation. And the reason why this is important is because the number one effector of the ionosphere is the sun. And the sun has not been doing as much to perturb the ionosphere as it was in past decades, in past solar cycles. This was explicitly brought up in the articles that had been talking about this. And the second one here talked about the influence of geomagnetic secular variation, which of course is the fancy name for what we call the magnetic pole shift, the geomagnetic excursion into which we are entering now. These were uh, one of many, many, many several items that we brought to light in our most recent book, The Observer Supplement 2022-2023 version. And it's really important that we recognize all the little ways that earth is being affected because they're like drops in a bucket you know at first you look down and there's not much in there and then you look in there and all of a sudden the bucket's full and so when we got this paper uh just this week that was basically confirming that you know yes the sun is the major perturber but up to 20 percent of the ionospheric perturbation measures could be related to exactly what the geomagnetic field is doing, how strong it is, how much of a protector of Earth's magnetic, uh, you know, being that it's providing. We really have a confirmation of just how important the ionosphere is as one of the things that'll be the telltale signs of just how much progress we are um, sustaining in this ongoing magnetic shift of Earth. And so, Yes, we can look at what's going on with the climate. We can look at what's going on with the magnetic field, but we only get really reliable updates every five years. Really, the ionosphere, that electric layer between the atmosphere and the magnetosphere is really the thing that will be affected first, the, affected, uh, the thing affected most, and it's really going to tell us more than anything else when things are starting to get really bad. And um, I honestly think there's a place for ham radio operators those who have been doing it for decades, to really step in and help here because um, if they've been doing it for a while, they know based on the solar activity, based on the space weather and geomagnetic activity, exactly what kind of skip they should be getting off uh, the different layers of the ionosphere. And so they should be able to um, really notice when things aren't as they should be. And that goes for both solar maximum and solar minimum. And so um, let's keep that eye on the ionosphere. This, this paper, you know, that started it all really, um, really puts into perspective just how important the ionosphere is for those of us tracking this ongoing magnetic pole shift. And of course, it will lead to all the other things, uh, all those greater effects on the climate, on volcanoes, on human psychology, everything like that. But it does start with the ionosphere. And unlike the magnetic field, there is excellent data on the ionosphere every single day. It is by far the best way we can tell how our planet is doing magnetically. It's our canary in the coal mine for the magnetic pole shift. Uh, everything from total electron content to the critical frequency measures of the F1 and F2 layers. Um, the measures of the global electric circuit, the Schumann resonance as well. All of these things are tied together. And so uh, keeping an eye on the ionosphere, it's not the most exciting. It's not the most well-known, even among observers. But uh, I can honestly say I don't know of a more important thing to be keeping an eye on um, in terms of this magnetic pole shift. So anyway, see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.